All right. Before we bring Greg in, I want to introduce him because he's got a great introduction. Somebody that has done a lot of well, a lot of good work in real estate and has served agents quite well and has a wonderful brokerage. So before we bring him into the show, let me introduce him. Greg began his real estate career nearly 25 years ago. He and his dad started his Century 21 in Myrtle Beach in 1999. Greg started as a producer, reaching levels of 300 sales per year, consistently as and as high as 484 with a small team. Now he focuses on attracting agents into his office and developing them into top producers. He has multiple agents doing over 100 deals per year, while two are consistently doing 200 plus deals each year. All were new licensees when they met Greg. Oh, and Greg himself still does 150 deals a year. Wow. So there's Greg. Let's get Greg into the show. Greg, come on in, buddy. Hey, Greg. Hey, everybody. I uh, <laughs> I like that little introduction. I appreciate you uh, sharing some of that stuff and, uh, and um, excited to be here with you guys. Yeah. Thank you for taking the time. Absolutely. Because yeah. I know you've got a, man, you've got a machine of a brokerage down there and some phenomenal agents. I do. And, oh. and, and listen, today's Friday. I'm actually in Florida myself. I'm in a hotel mm -hmm. room. And um, so I'm dressed down significantly. If this, so this is not what I go into my list and presentations with <laughs> or my coaching <laughs> sessions with my, with my agents. But uh, I had some time, so I wanted to take the time and, and share with you all. So um, We're so glad you did. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Cool. You know, um, casual Friday, man. Casual <laughs> Friday. That's it. That's it. <laughs> I love hey, the conversation y'all were having about legacy a, a moment ago. Fantastic. I was, I was listening in on that. Yeah, I appreciate that. Which, you know, that's something we could probably get into even with you um, is legacy because of mm -hmm. your dad and stuff. But, but um, let's do this before we even get into that. Let's just do a little fun uh, rapid fire questions just so we can, cool. the audience can get to know Greg Harrelson a little bit more. Is that good? Okay. Yeah, let's do it. I'm a little <laughs> nervous about that one, but I'm, I'm in, I'm game. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So who is your favorite hero of fiction? Um, uh, Rocky. Rocky. Oh yeah. Okay. That's a good one. And second to that would be Mr. Miyagi. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's a good one. actually. Not, I, and I will say, I, I'm, and I don't want to take you off track, but I would say Mr. Miyagi was probably, my most influential mentor I've ever had. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Is that, that what's helping me off track you at all. keep peaceful or? No, it was, um, if anybody's a fan of Karate Kid or have just watched Karate Kid, the process of wax on, wax off, sand on, sand off, paint on, paint off, um, and the calmness and let things come to you and things like that. And that wax on, wax off is a very important part of my development of talent is everybody wants to skip the process. Nobody wants to go from crawling, walking to running. They want to go from crawling to running. And what they don't mm -hmm. realize is, yes, I can take them from crawling to running. But when they start running, if they don't learn the things they, that people learn when, they, when they're walking, then they're actually not going to do as well if we slow it down and go through the proper steps. Wow, that's that's good. That's a so whole lesson kinda, right there, Greg. Yeah, it is. So they're kind of you're saying like if they do the basics and learn to do the basics really well, then as they progress, they'll they'll always have that like muscle memory to fall back on that basic platform. Yeah, yeah, pretty much, pretty much. If you yeah, you got to build a good core, got to build a foundation before you start going vertical. So right. most people want to go vertical too fast. And because of mm. impatience or desperation or whatever that might be. And, and I think a lot of times coaches themselves, they want to be liked. So the coaches want to take them straight to building vertical because that's where all the sexy feeling and all the good, good feeling is. Nobody wants to actually just go and, and, and continue to work the land, build the foundation and take their time. Everyone wants to rush. And usually what happens is you go vertical too fast. You have an unstable uh, building and a headwind comes or big wind comes and blows it down. Right. That's so true. And that's where you see that whole ebb and flow thing. It's just not a consistent growth. 
a shift yeah. of a market. That's shift why market. in a hot market, everyone's getting into real estate. In a down market, everyone's failing out of real estate because they never actually they they went from they went from a new licensee to doing quite a bit of deals. They never really knew how to do the business. They just they thought they did. They didn't realize how the the it was the market that was doing the business. It wasn't really them doing the business. So when the market shifted, they realized they actually were not. They didn't have the foundation to sustain longevity. Yeah. All right, I took you off. I took you off. No, right. you're good. Was, you're good. Okay, I no, promise I won't great. go that deep on every answer. <laughs> that was great. What's left on your bucket list, Greg? What's left on my bucket list? Um, you know, just more travel. More travel. So the, there's one thing that 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 I is is definitely a bucket list item, and it is. I, I have said I'm going to, and I still say I'm going to, I'm going to uh, trip to uh, the base camp of Mount Everest. Oh, wow. So I do do a lot of hiking, um, but and I'm not going to ever attempt to do Mount Everest, but I want to see Mount Everest with my own eyes and go through um, all that, uh, the, the 14 to you know maybe 18 days of, of, of hiking that it's going to take to get there. That is, a buck, that is a true bucket list item that I still have that yeah, I have not completed. That would be great. Yep. So if you could instantly become one, what would you want to be an expert in? A communication. Communication and, uh, and especially in the area of listening. I think communication has a lot to, I think listening is one of the most significant factors of communication. And I think in our listening of others is where we're honoring them, we're appreciating them, we're making them feel honored and loved, and um, and true connection comes in. So you know, talking less and listening more is uh, is is something that I think we should all be practicing. But I would say communication. I'd I'd like to. That's at least that's the first thing that comes to my mind. Sorry, sorry guys, I lost my um, audio. <laughs> now I've got an echo. Good you recovery. guys keep going. <laughs> Okay. Can you tell us a little bit, Greg, about how you got into real estate and how you grew your business to be where you are now? Yeah. You know, so I was one of those, uh, those guys that uh, went to college and I went five years. And after five years, I think I might have been a sophomore. Um, and um, at some point we realized that college was probably not what I was going to focus on. At least I realized that. Mm -hmm. And, um, and then what I did, my dad happened to be in real estate. So, um, I needed to get a real job and, um, bartending and waiting, waiting and things like that was, could provide money at good money at that moment at that age, but it probably was not going to be a career. Right. And, um, as a matter of fact, if I get into that, I might never get out of that because a lot of right. people are in that situation. So I actually started working for my dad as a part-time telemarketer. And I started making calls, calling cold calls, FISBOs, expireds, handing them off to my dad. He would go and do listing presentations. Um, I did that for about six months as literally getting paid an hourly wage from him, and, you know, 20 plus years ago mm -hmm. and, um, and realized that I set a lot of appointments for him and uh, something was working. It seemed like I started um, uh, a focus for, for the first time I took something serious. I yeah. focused on it. I was getting results. And um, that was the beginning. And from there, I, I eventually stopped giving him appointments. And I started taking those appointments myself and just became a, um, you know, an agent that prospected and took a boatload of listings. And, um, you know, it wasn't, it's not uncommon for me. I mean, I, I even, even now, just uh, in the month of uh, February, I've already taken 21 listings. And um, the difference today is I haven't, I didn't make one outbound phone call today <laughs> in the month of February oh. because I've made so many outbound phone calls in my career that I built a monster database that's been nurtured. I have really great rapport with it. And I pretty much get come list me calls, um, you know, um, I mean, multiple every week. That's great. So can you yeah. tell us a little bit about nurturing the database? I know agents ask that all the time. How, how, you know, what types of things do you do to, to keep in touch with those people? Yeah, so I, I, so I take a multi-channel approach, number one. So a, a few things, I'll kind of go down almost like a checklist. So Thank one you. thing I'm going to do with that, that database is I'm going to have them on a call schedule once a quarter. So every 90 days, I'm going to be physically calling them, okay? Um, mm -hmm. Then what I'm going to do is every month, they're going to get two emails from me. One is going to be like a, a newsletter that is going to just kind of be a summary of what's going on in the market. 
um, like a CMA and then some dialogue mm -hmm. around it. And then another email is going to have a video and it's going to be more of a video update of what's going on in the market. So I got one that's a video update and one that's more of an, a CMA kind of newsletter fashion. So those are two email touches in a month that I'm going to do one call every quarter. I'm going to do a direct mail piece to that database every 60 days. So not every wow. month, but every 60 days. And that direct mail piece is going to be um, like the solds that I had in those 60 days. So I'll have just a bunch of pictures of the solds. And all I'm doing is really saying to them, I'm active, I'm doing business, things are happening, I'm moving property. I'm not really asking them to sell or not asking or, or, or asking for business. It's just another impression that I'm doing things. Then I'm going to upload that same exact database into Facebook as a custom audience. And I'm going to start doing a boosted post to that specific database only. And I'm going to do video, one video a month, which is going to be uh, that same video that I email them. They're going to see that video on social media, assuming that they're on social media. And then I'm going to do a second post. That'll be something like a just sold and whatnot. Now, that's only going to cost me about $15 at, in, in, in the month. It's not like expensive. It's just, it's just uh, the, the, the fact that I'm doing that. Okay, so now what do we have here? What we've got is I've hit them by mailbox. If they open up their mailbox, they're going to see me. If they're around their phone, they're going to see me. They're going to hear me. If they're on Facebook, they're going to see me. And, um, and then if they open up their email, they're going to receive emails from me. So it's a multi-channel approach where I'm not really selling. What I'm really doing is I'm educating. Right. So I'm yes. giving value, giving information, not asking for anything in return. I feel I believe in what they call the law of reciprocity. If I give, then I will receive. I don't have to let that be part of my plan, part of the strategy. It's almost like a law, just like there's a law of gravity. I don't necessarily understand it, but I do believe it, it, it actually if I drop something, it's going to fall. And, and that's kind of the approach that I take. I think that's really good. Uh, you know, one of the things I was even thinking about this is that back back in the day, I saw a book where there was this girl, like she was covering up everything that she had in front of her and other people are kind of leaning over and she was so scared to give away any information. Yeah. And what she was actually doing is holding herself back from yeah. learning even more because she wasn't willing to share it. Yeah. And so you're providing that value back out. Um, therefore, you're you're kind of, uh, you know, developing yourself and learning more. So yes, yeah. to keep giving back out. So that's, yeah, I totally agree. I can with assure that. you whatever she was hiding, we, it, it wasn't secret. There were no secrets there. Like yeah. there's no secrets in the real estate business. The secret is, um, you know, what are the activities that you'll execute and who are you? Who's what's your being inside of that execution? Like I'm going to exit. So I've got activities that I just shared that I'm going to execute every single month. Now who mm -hmm. I'm being is the educator. Now that you don't, no one should be the educator unless that's part of them. Okay. So I'm choosing that that's who I want to be. That's not good or bad. That's just me. That's my style. That's what I have a passion for. Okay. And, um, and so, you know, the, the, but I'm connecting two things. I'm connecting who I am as an identity and activities to actually make sure that I'm conveying the message to the database in the way that I want to convey it. Mm. That's good. So like you could take all my secrets. It's not going to work. What's going to work is you being authentic and taking action on something. I just given you my actions and then a little bit of insight into the, 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 the personality that I portray. Yeah, that's good. It's really good. So um, what, what kind of tech would you say is something that agents should be kind of focusing on? You know, like what is the, what is the, how can we get that? What is the best form of technology to keep in front in a post pandemic world that you're using the most right now to produce that amount of value? Do you th see video kind of being the. Yeah. The yeah. Video is it just allows us to connect. Right. Because uh, so, you know, just remember, like we, we we all know that we we send less handwritten cards. OK, um, I'm not saying everybody needs to go out and start sending sending handwritten cards. It's not a bad thing, but. Just my point is we're doing less of that. So we say happy birthday via social media and we say happy birthday versus text. So if we actually, anybody who will text a video, hey, Jane, I just want to tell you happy birthday. She's going to remember that text because it's a video text more than happy birthday exclamation mark. Yeah. She's going to remember the video, right? So it can be the same delivery method 
but the the but the fact that the video the video is a way to connect at a deeper level. Mm -hmm. So that's very very important. Now, when it comes to the technology, what does what do I use to do all this? There's no new technology that's necessary to do anything that I said. I mean, Century Twenty One has technology. You can get technology outside of Century Twenty One. There is so just about every technology or CRM system has the ability to do what I just shared. It's not the tech, it's the human aspect of it. Mm -hmm. We got to bring, bring humanity back into it. And one thing that I love about everyone being automated, auto responders, I'm going to automate this and automate that, is yes, it's efficient to communicate to the masses, but it's ineffective to build advocates. Mm -hmm. And what I'm doing is focusing on building advocates. A database is, is for most people is just a place you store a bunch of names and data like telephone numbers and email. My database, I look at it as a data bank. If I take a database of names, a database of names is nothing than just a list of names my, uh, of strangers. What I wanna do is I wanna take those strangers and through my communication, I want these strangers to, to gravitate towards becoming an acquaintance of mine. And then once I become, they become an acquaintance, I wanna get them moving towards becoming an advocate. I'm not gonna do that by just cold communication. I'm gonna to have to bring humanity back into it, bring connection. I can still scale it with technology as long as I'm using video. You know, I, it's it's interesting. So we've been having so many conversations and everyone kind of says provide value and it's a referral business. You're using a word that, have, that people have not used is advocate. Yes. And I like that because I think that's a better approach than, and that addresses what that database is really for. You're using that to develop advocates for you to, you know, basis yeah. relationship. Yeah. Um, but that's, that's really good. I like yeah, I got that an word. example. I had a, 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 an elderly gentleman. I mean, he had to be 85 maybe. And he set an appointment with me, came into my, he was, and he's like, yes, I live at so-and-so address. I'd like to come into your office and meet with you. So I'm thinking, okay, you know, usually they wanted me to go out to their house and he wants me to come into the office, but this was a very nice guy. And he was being a little elusive. Like he wasn't saying he wanted to sell. I'm, I'm surprised they even took the only reason I would have taken this appointment, by the way, because he was an 85 year old gentleman. And I was like, I'm not going to like run this guy through this qualification script. He's, I, I, I owe this guy respect. I don't know why it just did. And, 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 and he sat me down or I sat him down in the, in my conference room and he said, Hey, there's only one reason I want to meet with you. Well, I'm never going to sell my house, but I told my wife when I die <laughs> that you're our realtor. And I just wanted to meet our realtor face to face. I, I will promise you, I told my wife that if I die and she needs to sell this property, you're the person who's going to take care of it. That's what an advocate is. Mm. That's really good. Now, by the way, I don't even know how that guy got in my database. <laughs> so the, 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 the message here, is see how the strategies that I was using, the, the identity I was portraying, who I was being, took a stranger that I didn't know, turned them into an advocate. And by the way, those, that's how I get come list me calls. You know, that's, you know, so the, the, and that's the thing too, is in a contact database, a lot of agents, you know, they're, they're inundated with leads. Um, and though they had this, they want to almost delete them because they, they feel like they're just dead. And, you know, we constantly tell them like, guys, you never know. That's a perfect example is you give them to me, give them to me. Know. I'll give them back to you with the referral. Boom. I can take, <laughs> I, I will, I can tell you, I can take their dead lead database. And I can get a 44 response, 40 percent uh, response rates from their dead leads within 24 hours through a, I, just I, one drip campaign. No I, I completely believe it. Um, there was a, there was an interview that you did. I think I, it might have been with Real Geeks. They came in and did a, a tour of your office, and yeah. I, you know they interviewed some of your agents and showed them working and doing their scripts and stuff. I don't doubt for a second what you just said. Yeah, like I oh, I know. I just did a test. Somebody challenged me the uh, earlier. In this week and I told my assistant, give them one hour, take their database, do this, 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 boom. Four, it was a 39%. I missed it by 1%, but that's pretty darn good for a stranger in Fargo um, that I don't even know anything about. I just know, I just know the, I, I know the data so well. And by the way, out of your dead leads, not only will you get a 40% response rate, 12% of them are, have already done a business, have already done business 
are working with an agent to do business or you'll recapture and start working with to do business right now, 12%. Mm. So when I said, send it to me, go ahead and send it to me. Cause yeah. all I have to do is plug it in, hit a button and then spit it back to you. It's just, it comes at a cost. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And oh, by the way, I really don't want you to send it to me. So just in case anybody's <laughs> thinking that that's the business. No, I'm not in that business. I'm really not. I, I just want to, I really want to stress to you that yeah. there's so much opportunity within your arm's reach right now. We don't have to go look for more. We just have to go a little bit deeper on what we already have. Mm. Yeah, I think that kind of goes back to what you were saying, too, is the willingness to um, kind of keep pressing on. It's like yeah. not just, you know, move on and get that quick uh, result, you know, kind of like the wax on wax off thing. Right. I yeah. mean, it's, it's the yeah. same thing. It's like you got to go through the process. What you would consider as a dead lead is still a real person on the other end. Yeah. Yeah. And, and here's here. Maybe this will resonate with somebody. Um, your new leads. Is another agent's dead leads. And your you dead go. lead is another agent's new lead. Remember, if you take Zillow, Century 21, Remax, Redfin, every um, Trulia, everybody that has a website out there that collects leads, there's probably a billion leads collected every year and only five to six million transactions being done. So for that to actually, if we just look at those two numbers, that means leads are being counted multiple times. Yeah. So I'm getting it. It's a new lead. But six months ago, that new, my new lead was in somebody else's database as an old lead, and they actually ignored it. So my new lead is someone else's dead lead, and my dead leads will be somebody else's new leads. Yeah, that's so, so good. So if we just forget about all of it, let's just work the names that we have in our database, work them aggressively, and you'll say that your next new lead is your dead lead if you if you go out there and, and, and make enough attempts on them. That's so true. Yeah. So Greg, in our area, a lot of it. Oh. You, you had mentioned earlier that, you know, you had taken, what is it? 20 some um, listings just last month. Yeah. And this How month, February. Yep. In February. Yeah. So can you talk a little bit about that? I mean, how, how are you doing that? Do you see that in your market area that, you know, are people reluctant to list their homes in this market? Um, are you referring to because of the health concerns? Yes. Yeah. So in, gosh, you know, in South Carolina, there's, um, yes, there are people that are a little bit reluctant here and there. And, um, and of course we honor wherever they stand with that, with that particular issue. We surely do not have any, we don't have any scripts, don't use any scripts. And I don't think that we should be looking to invent scripts to try to convert people because that's a level of comfort for them. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to overstep that. That's a boundary that I don't, I don't, I don't overstep. But I will say that, you know, that uh, in general, in our market, there's quite a bit of activity going on and there's not that doesn't consist of, of, of a high percentage of the people. Yeah, that's it. good. You know, but again, when we talk about the house, so like, you know, I, I sent I, unfortunately, I sent my assistant sent an email that she shouldn't have sent the day that she sent it and she's a great staff. So surely I'm not, I'm not, not complaining. The only problem is, is that I've got 15 people that are wanting to talk to me right now about listing their property. And they just got, they just came to me within the last 48 hours and I'm in Tampa. And after this call and my next call, I'm not calling a soul back. I'm going to go watch my daughter play tennis at college, mm -hmm. we're going to go have a nice lunch and nice dinner and I'm going to hang out and then I'm flying to California. So like, um, you know, to do, to do, uh, uh, another thing that I've got going on, but the key is, is like, because I've nurtured the database so much, I sent one email out and that email got so many people to respond. And, mm -hmm. and that email, somebody may say, oh, I wonder what that email was. It was really simple. It was, Hey Jane, we just sold a few more properties in your area. Right now, we have a waiting list of buyers waiting for new inventory because the inventory is so low in our market. Just wanted to check with you and see if there's any chance you're going to be selling or thinking about selling the next couple of months. Please give me a call or, you know, and then, but now I sent that to 19,000 people and that, wow. um, and then that yielded me, that yielded me hundreds of responses, hundreds, probably 600 responses. 
But out of the 600, my staff had to go through and there's about 15, 16 people that are like appointments. Yeah. And so, and I think this is where you, you're really good at this. And I, th I think this is where even like, what, even just going back to that video I watched of your brokerage is this system and process you have in place. There is the distractions and all that is yeah. not there. They are there to accomplish the mission and that's what they're focused on doing. So a couple, couple things, uh, one being like, what would be the advice for cutting out some of that noise for agents? What are the things that they are doing that they should focus on doing and the things that they need to stop doing? Like, what are some of those things? Like, cause yeah. I know there's a lot of stuff that's just busy work. Yeah. So, so one thing that they need to start doing is they need to, agents need to, um, they need to book an appointment with themselves for lead generation. So if it's not in your, if it's not in your uh, schedule, then it won't exist, especially lead generation. Okay. So, and, and, and then you, you must, you must hold that appointment just as sacred as an appointment, as a listing appointment or a buyer's appointment. It's, it's amazing. It's like, you know, if you've got a listing appointment today at one o'clock, you're probably going to show up for that appointment. Okay. But if you've got a lead generation appointment with yourself at eight o'clock, you may or may not show up. Like there could be no more important, like the, the lead generation starting time is way more important than the listing presentation starting time. Way more important. Your lead generation has an opportunity to give you a new lead every day. That listing has an opportunity to give you one lead, one, one deal today. Okay. Mm -hmm. So lead generation your is always going to be the priority, but but there's a reason why agents will hold their appointments to the consumer, but they won't stick to their appointments to themselves. It's the same scenario as people who have a partner, a workout partner that agree to go meet at the gym. They, those two people will be more consistent showing up at the gym than the person that doesn't have a workout partner constantly says, I'm going to do this, but is very inconsistent. We as human beings will always let ourselves down before we let someone else down. The only, mm -hmm. it's our egos. We're just showing up for the listen presentation because we don't want to look bad in front of someone else. Mm, but we good. won't show up for ourselves to lead generation because nobody's looking. Mm. That's what's going on here. Okay. Mm. So the first thing people need to do is they need to actually schedule themselves to lead generate. That's number one. The mm. thing that they, that's what they need to start doing. What they need to stop doing is they need to stop thinking that when they talk to somebody at 930 while they're lead generating and that person says, well, yeah, I would love to look at some properties with you. As a matter of fact, can we do it tomorrow at nine? That's when you're supposed to lead generate. But an agent always says, yes, we got to stop saying yes to the first comment or first question or request of the consumer. The consumer didn't choose nine because that was the only time they can do it. The consumer just threw a random timeout and you said yes. So when somebody says, hey, Greg, yes, yes, I am thinking about doing something. Can we meet at nine tomorrow? You know what? I appreciate. Uh, yes, we can meet. Nine is going to be tough because I have a, a prior engagement. But how about 1130? Will that work or to be better? No, 1130 will work. 70% yeah. of the time you give them an alternate time, they're going to say, yes, that'll work. No hesitation. But agents yeah. are going to hear, oh, can you meet me at nine? Oh, yes. And now guess what they did? They will, after that call, they'll start preparing for that appointment. That's even tomorrow. So they stop lead generation today and they don't do any lead generation tomorrow because they got to go to that appointment when they could yeah. have actually done that appointment after lunchtime and had their cake and ate it too. That is so true. So Those are true. just very basic things that, and when you say my environment, these are the types of things that I'm coaching my agents on. And, and, and these are simple, right? Simple common sense that everybody that's listening can execute on this. This takes nothing but a commitment of you saying, oh, I'm going to do this now. Well, and, and I've noticed this even on my own time management side um, of things is when I stage my area, when I have a specific area that I do certain tasks at and it's ready to go, that point of entry is, is a whole lot easier to, you know, to meet. Um, I mean, just even like yeah. the live show, having this set up, I can go in here and do this immediately. There's no barrier to entry. 
So what you have set up in your brokerage is they have these points. They go straight in and they work. They have everything set up. It's ready to go. They, these agents can have this at home and set up and ready to go. There's Get rid of those distractions and don't give away your time. I think that's really, really good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, go ahead, Jane. Oh, I was just going to say, you know, you're talking about how to consistently prospect and, and that type of thing and set aside the time. I think a lot of our agents um, have difficulty with that. Like you said, that it's just it's not become habit. And I think a lot of them are afraid. Um, can you talk yeah. about their fear, fears in your agents a little bit? You know, a lot of them are afraid to do that cold calling that you're talking about or afraid to do videos and things like that. They, they get caught up in the what if it's not perfect? Yeah. 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 That, that, yes. And, and by far, I mean, I'm so far, I, I'm, I'm actually so done with trying to be perfect. Like, you know, I'm just, I'm so done with that. Cause I just realized that doesn't work, you know, mm. and, and it doesn't work when we try to, when we, when we have expectations of our spouse being perfect, it doesn't work when we have expectations of our children being perfect. It's surely not going to, uh, uh, we're still, we're surely not going to meet those expectations of ourselves either. You know, what I, what I say to people that are having challenges with, um, Let's just say you got consistency challenges and then you got fear challenges, right? Like fear of looking stupid, sounding stupid, not knowing what to say and things like that. Um, the, the fear of consistency or, or the challenge with consistency is it's interesting how all of us as agents, most of us as agents will have some challenges with consistently showing up to, to build our business. Mm. But then we'll look at, say, I'm going to just as a hypothetical, we'll look at our children that complains about going to practice every day. And then if you think about what you say to your child when they're like saying, I don't want to go to school. I don't want to go to practice. I, like if you just think of like, think of you being the coach and mentor of your child and think about all the wonderful mentoring and coaching lessons you give them and conversations you have around why it's important to do those things. If you would actually just turn that conversation around and start listening to yourself, you would see that your excuses are the same as a child's excuses. And when you actually start doing what you say, not only will your children start doing what you say, but you'll see the benefits of doing what you say. So there's an inconsistency. There's an inconsistency of what we coach, but what we actually do. And you need mm -hmm. to change that. Because mm -hmm. there's, you got to understand, people are watching, whether it's a child, whether it's a friend, whether it's a spouse, whether it's a family member, a loved one, people are watching what you do matters. See, I look at it as this, I still have a stack of pictures there and, 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 and these, they're so old. I'm I sometimes I can't remember which baby of mine it is. They're so old. I'm like, is that Morgan or is that, <laughs> is that Lucas, Tatiana? These things are so old. Those pictures years and years ago would stand, they would be on my station and they were on my left hand corner taped to the wall. And when mm. I looked at those pictures in the morning, I asked myself, am I being the example that I'd want them to follow? Yeah, that's good. And, and, and that was a way that, you know, that, that was just one thing that I created as a visual for myself to remind me that, you know what, this is more about me. And, and think about everything we've done in life and all the pains and struggles that we've dealt with in order to provide for somebody else. Well, that's what my lead generation is. My lead generation is, you know, yes, it might be uncomfortable, but you know, for men, women that have had, had children, it was probably uncomfortable for them to give birth, but they still did it, right? <laughs> and look at the advantages. Look at yeah. the joy and what really came from that pain. Yeah. Well, you know, listen, yes. lead generation is not nearly as important as giving birth, but I hopefully you make, the, <laughs> I, hopefully I'm making a connection here no. that it is one of those areas in life where we, if we'll just embrace uncomfortable, mm. we'll, we'll, we'll attract extraordinary. Oh, so, so well said. It's so true. It's so true. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's really good. So um, before I'm, we're going to begin to wrap up with you so you can get on to your, <laughs> your busy day. So, uh, but uh, just for everybody that's watching, uh, before we wrap this up, if you guys have a question for yeah. Greg, go ahead and prop, pop it into the comments there. Put a cue in front of it for us, though, just so we can recognize it. 
and we'll bring it up on the screen while asking him. But uh, we, I do want to mention this too. Uh, he does have a podcast, Level Up, and it's on all of the mm -hmm. yeah. uh, wonderful uh, distributor networks out there. Um, and he interviews yeah. some really good people on there. There's a lot of good content. So a lot of stuff that he's talking about now, you can find on that podcast. So just go to whatever uh, program you use or whatever app you use, Google Podcasts, Apple, all those. Type in Level Up. And uh, is it, um, what's yeah, the full name of the podcast? It's Level Up, the Level Up podcast, going from agent to entrepreneur. There it is. Yeah. And they can also, there's a lot of free like blogs that I put out on realestatesalesolutions.com. You go to that blog. I'm constantly posting stuff there um, and whatnot. And, you know, if, if you don't have anything else, Adam, to ask me, can mm -hmm. we go back to that legacy conversation? And the reason I yes. say that, because very few leaders like yourselves talk to their agents about legacy. And, mm -hmm. and I have to say, when I was kind of surprised that you were talking about that and, and, and pleasantly surprised. It, it tells me a lot Thank about your company, y'all's company, that you guys would even bring up that conversation because um, most companies are afraid. Mm -hmm. I had a coach give me an exercise one time and it was a little weird, but he told me as a homework assignment, I had to write my eulogy. Mm. Yeah. And, and so I had to basically write out what I hoped somebody would say at my funeral after I've passed. And I don't have my whole eulogy memorized, but I can tell you a very important part of it that's never left my heart. And that is, I, I, I wrote out that somebody says, thank you. Mm. But the person who stood up that said, thank you was not one of my agents. And it was not one of my agent's children because I'm going to know my agent and I'm not necessarily needing thank you from them. I'm going to know my agent's children and I feel like it would be says thank you to be the grandchild of one of my agents who I probably will never know. And, and, and I want that child to go up there that I've never met and them to say, thank you. I've never met you, but I've heard about a, a lot about you. Mm. You don't know me, but my mom told me so many things that you shared with her. And she shared with me what you told my grandma. And those things have made a difference to me. Man, and so is... when we come down to legacy, it is, I want to be such a contribution to the people that I communicate with that it resonates to the third generation yeah. that can never say thank you. So every time. Nope. Oh. Good old internet. There he is. Hold on. Yep. There yep. we go. So when I'm doing podcasts like this or, or interviews like <laughs> We keep having audio issues. Okay. Can you hear me? I think so. I can hear you, but you're frozen. Okay. Well, well so the main thing is I just want to make sure that anytime I'm in front of real estate agents, that I do my part to give as much as I can. And I'm not looking for anything in return. That's the legacy I, think I want to leave. You know, I, I think you actually kind of knit, you hit legacy. Um, I, I think that's a great idea. And I, um, I'm going to do that. I'm actually going I to write I hope you do. I'm, it, I'm it, absolutely going to write it's, that. It, it's, it, it can get emotional. When I say it, I almost like get emotional. Like I'm, yeah. I'm holding myself back a little bit because it's, <laughs> Good old internet. I mean, I, I agree with everything he's saying. I think that yeah. would that really puts legacy in perspective and and how you're going to live. Yeah, it does. There you are. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with that. I don't. It, I who knows. It's it's the nature of these things, yeah. but energy you know vibrating at yeah. a high level right now. It's like throwing everything <laughs> off. Yeah, probably. Good. So well, I, I hope I really, you do do that. I hope you do yeah. do that. And as I say, it's uh, it's it's a very emotional. Uh, Thing that I went through 
And um, I've never forgot it. It's probably 15, 16 years ago when I did that. Yeah, you know, I, I'm absolutely going to do that. And I challenge everybody that's watching, uh, do the same. Yeah. I, I think that's a great perspective. And I, and I, and I like where you're, you're going with that. It's, it's not so much for the people that you're leaving behind now, even though that's a legacy. The legacy is kind of beyond that. It's, it's yes. three or four yeah. generations on that they come back to the graveside, not because they are mourning, but just because they see the value yeah. of that individual that is laying there and they wanted to be a part of that. Yeah. And to me, that that is absolutely legacy. Greg, that was great. And that's going to, and, and by the way, like if I go to the third generation, that means I'm taking care of the second and the first generation. So there's plenty of legacy being left. Like to me, it's you're, you're leaving more legacy for the ones that are now with you if you're yeah. focusing on that third generation, which you may never meet. Yeah. Well, and you know, it's interesting too, and we'll wrap up with this, um, is the, the Asian culture, they tend to plan 50 to a hundred mm. years out. Us Americans, we plan maybe if we're lucky a year, we might set yearly <laughs> goals, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like the majority of people don't do estate planning until they're much older, you know, but, and I think that even this conversation will lead into that kind of uh, conversation on down the road. And that, you know, agents should be preparing for that. That's, that's coming for everybody. Um, we should all be moving in that direction. And what are we leaving behind? I think that's yeah. just really good. Um, right. Thanks for letting me share that by the way. Yo, th thank you for sharing it. Um, absolutely. Um, and you know, we, we have a comment here. No, no questions, but, um, she looks like Jane's back. Um, Deb Rocky, she says, my husband was uh, was a professor and he taught emergency medicine. And that was one of his assignments was to write your own obituary. It really makes you reflect and plan to be a better person. Yes. It, yes. Deborah, man, I'm glad you chimed in and I'm, I'm glad you've experienced something like that because I, I can't tell you how, 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 how important this was for me. Yeah. Donna says, love the reminder that I need to control my schedule. Yep. It's a, <laughs> it's a daily reminder. We need it daily. <laughs> yep. It's too easy to give away that time. It really, really is. Yeah. Well, well, Greg, I'm going to uh, bring up a screen here just to uh, basically show people how to get a hold of you. Um, so here is Greg Harrelson's contact information. This is Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Uh, also the Central 21 Harrelson Group, as well as the name of the podcast. Um, feel free to reach out on those, on those links. We will have those in the description after the show. So you guys can just come back and click those and get in contact with Greg. Um, Greg, thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. I uh, really appreciate you taking the time. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for doing this, everybody. Bye-bye. Yep. Bye. See ya.